Indo-Pacific. Right now, we're monitoring we're breaking news out of Capitol Hill, where conference. several anti-Israel so protesters have interrupted the Senate Appropriations Committee as Secretaries Antony Blinken and Lloyd Austin attempted to testify about Israel and Ukraine funding. Joining me now is retired U.S. Navy Captain William Toti. Uh, Captain Toti, I know that you've been watching these hearings like I have. What do you make of these protesters with the blood on their hand and Gaza written down the arm saying, you know, uh, things like uh, a ceasefire now and let Gaza live? Nick, I think these protesters think this is their Vietnam moment. I was a small boy during the protests in Vietnam. But I was old enough to recognize and remember how violent and bloody um, those protests were. I will say there's two differences. Number one, the United States was leading the war in Vietnam. And number two, Vietnam never constituted a threat against the United States. None of those factors are true here. You know, and, and I, I would say that these folks are forgetting history. I was uh, in the Pentagon on 9-11 when the plane hit. I was lucky enough to survive when many of my friends didn't. When I got home that night, many of my World War II veteran friends called me and said, you were hit by a kamikaze just like us. It wasn't until that moment that I realized that Al-Qaeda didn't invent this tactic of a suicide airplane flying to something. It was invented by the Japanese in World War II. It was just that our enemies were better students of history than we were. And this is one of those moments, and it's an inflection point in global history, not just American history, and if we don't do something to, to eliminate one of the three major global threats against the United States, uh, this could go very bad for us in the future. Captain Toti, I'm glad that you said that because, uh, you know, I too am a little bit older and I'm surprised by uh, the anti-Israeli sentiment that I am seeing, but I'm noticing that it seems to split around age, that those 30 and younger uh, feel quite differently than those who are uh, my age, quite frankly, and older. Talk to us about this funding request for Israel and Ukraine and why are Secretaries Blinken and Austin taking this fight to D.C.? Well, I'll talk about Ukraine first, Nick. And all I can say is Ronald Reagan must be rolling over in his grave right now. It, it, we spent trillions of dollars during the Cold War to, you know, kind of neutralize and defeat the Soviet Union. And if you would have told any Congress during every, any president's regime, from John F. Kennedy through, I would say, George W. Bush, that for a fraction of that money, we could really have an impact on neutralizing the emergent Russian threat with no risk to American lives while rebuilding American defense in jobs, every one of those Congresses would have jumped at the chance. And it's amazing to me that we're even having this conversation about Ukraine. Of course, we need to continue to support the neutralization of the Russian threat, one of the three global threats against the United States. And Israel, I think most of Congress agrees that this has to happen. There's a small fringe that your previous guest referred to as useful idiots that oppose it. But, but I think that it's kind of, it's, an, it's, a, it's going to happen. The only question is, how easy will Congress allow it to happen? If this were a normal, deliberative congressional process, we could split those elements apart and have a debate about them. But Congress has become so dysfunctional that if we want to push this through in meaningful time, they need to be ag aggregated and passed altogether, in my opinion. Captain Toddy, I've less than a minute, but I have to ask you this, talking about that Ukraine funding once again, because I have no doubt that the funding for Israel will pass. Why is there such a disconnect? Why isn't the case being made on why it is important that we continue to fund Ukraine? What message aren't the American people getting or what message isn't the Biden administration uh, uh, pushing? Well, clearly it's two factors. First, there's a, a valid argument that we need to balance the federal budget. Got it, okay? You could have a debate about how we do that. And the second is an increasing sense of isolationism in the Republican Party that's emerged post-Trump. And I say that as somebody who, are, who considers himself a Reagan Republican. And so I think it's a dangerous precedent because the United States needs to be a global leader. And this is one area where clear global leadership is required. This should not even be a debate. And Captain Tony, when we talk about Ukraine, you've got someone saying, hey, we're willing to take out this enemy for you with no boots on the ground. We just need you to give us weapons. And somehow that message is being lost, Captain Tony. Yeah, I don't understand it. I've been to Ukraine. 
Ukraine has its problems. I don't want to deny that. But at this moment in history, there's a, there's a significant threat to Europe that can be eliminated, which would eliminate the need to invoke, you know, NATO Article 5 and would cause us to be drawn into war in Europe. And so this is the time to do it, and this should not even be a debate. Retired U.S. Navy Captain William Toddy. Sir, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you, Nick. For more thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.